morning and welcome to Get Real, um, Real Estate Insights with Bev Murray, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Florida uh, Realtor in Sarasota. Um, today we're going to talk about the major factors that are influencing the real estate market in 2023 as opposed to 2022. So over to you Bev to get us started on that. Oh morning, uh, well I think what the first thing I would say is that we have had, as most people are aware, a big shift, a definite shift in um, conditions from 2022 to 2023. Um, I think the biggest factor affecting that is inventory. Um, a year ago, I had absolutely nothing to show buyers uh, and in many of them who were in the market for a second home and didn't need to buy chose just to take a pull back from the market at that stage. Um, now we've got two and a half, over two and a half times more properties for sale than we did last year. Um, and this, so then this is providing opportunities for buyers in 2023. Um, the other big factor that has come into play in the last 12 months is interest rates. Um, a year ago, they were possibly 2.75, 3%. Now we're looking at Six six point two five. So that's the difference that affects affordability for buyers as well. Of course, but leading on from that, um, Sarasota still seems to be maintaining a relatively robust buyers and sellers market, despite that and despite inflationary concerns. Right? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, to be honest, it feels like a a normal market, a pre-COVID market, much more balanced uh, between buyers and sellers. It is technically still a seller's market. Um, but a year ago, if you wanted to sell your property at top dollar, you could do so. But where were you going to go? You know, unless you were downsizing or moving out of the to a, an area where the values were lower, it wasn't benefiting anybody. So that stalled the market. Um, so even though prices are not as inflated as they were for sellers, uh, they are more likely to be able to make the move, put their home on the market, and then be able to, to make a move, either, you know, whatever their next move might be. So. Well, my next question actually sort of covers the last two, but I'm sure there are extra details that you can add um, in terms of let's talk about current inventory levels and home prices. Um, how does that work in terms of us seeing still relatively strong sales and appreciation? Yeah, well, interestingly, prices, uh, it really feels that prices have dropped. Um, that's not actually the case. I think we've, I've been doing a couple of um, uh, market analyses this week for sellers and their, the values of their homes have, in, have increased somewhat in the last 12 months. I think uh, single family homes are up 10% year on year uh, in terms of pricing. Um, it's, it's definitely more competitive. Uh, so a seller needs to price their home reasonably. and But then they have every expectation that it will sell within a reasonable amount of time as well, because the buyers are out there. Um, and, you know, I think that for we're going to see more incentives um, from sellers to help buyers offset costs of increased mortgage and insurance costs too. Yeah, a question that we'll come to. Um, the next topic is a really, really hot one and has been for quite some time now. It's about the supply chain disruption and materials costs that are affecting new construction and how that then is feeding into the market. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think that the, uh, I think largely the supply chain issues have been ironed out. Um, there are some glitches still and, and everybody's expectations have, have um, become more reasonable. I suppose we're used to the fact that some things are going to take a bit longer than they used than they did prior to, to COVID. But I think more importantly than the supply chain issues, uh, we still just have a big problem with uh, labor and attracting labor, enough labor to keep up with demand. And that's across not just construction and real estate. Um, you know, most small business owners here in Florida are struggling to attract and retain staff. Uh, and that, you know, that makes it difficult to do, to do business. But going back to um, new construction for the national home builders and locally established um, production builders, 
they've pretty much caught up. Um, it's still taking longer to build a home that from scratch than it than it was. Um, these uh, I was speaking to a local salesperson yesterday, and they said that they are taking twelve months to build a house. Um, that's obviously down from the eighteen to twenty four months that they were quoting during COVID. Um, but it is still significantly more than it was in 2019. Um, but the, we are seeing they she actually mentioned they have quite a substantial amount of inventory now, um, particularly in townhomes, but also single family homes and condos. So that presents opportunities for buyers. Uh, they may be able to take advantage of incentives, um, help towards closing costs, finance costs, that kind of thing uh, in order to find a, a quick move in home. And even finishes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, well, fortunately, despite, um, you know, supply chain and everything that's been going on over the last year, we still live in one of the most sought after locations in Florida and in the US, um, which is great for all of us. What continues to drive that demand? And, you know, presumably that still gives us lots of opportunities. Yeah, definitely, because I think people are continuing to choose to move here and purchase property here for all sorts of different reasons, um, some of which are hangovers from COVID. Uh, we still have people who have decided to that life's too short and they want to um, bring forward their retirement plans. We have a whole raft of younger people who are more mobile now and can choose to live anywhere because they, they work from home. Um, and we are seeing less seasonality because of that. People aren't necessarily beholden to school uh, vacations, school holidays to, to make a move. Um, and then we, of course, have no income, no tax on income here. Uh, and we are significantly lower in property taxes compared to other states. So, so for a lot of people, be it you know business decisions or retirement decisions, this still is just a, a great option for people. And, you know, the weather's amazing. Uh, this time of year, it's absolutely fabulous. And, yeah, people still want to come and, and relax and spend time here in the sunshine. Gosh, stick me down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the other hot questions, which, again, is a huge influence on, you know, buyers um, and sellers right now, is um, insurance. And I know we're gonna be speaking about that in another edition of Get Real, but um, talk to us about that a little bit. And yeah, then... well, I think that it is absolutely a topic that we should discuss in more detail because it's, uh, and probably get uh, help from an expert on it, but since Hurricane Ian um, and since the uh, collapse of the condo building in the Miami area, uh, insurance companies have increasingly been under pressure to underwrite her properties in Florida. So there are lots of changes and there are, I think the, we're going to see more and more new stipulations from insurers. Um, so that's going to factor in to, to home purchasing and, and also home selling. Um, so I think we will discuss that in, a, in greater detail in, in an, another Get Real session. How about that? Sounds good. Um, well, I think that's all the questions we had today relating to, you know, last year as opposed to 2023. But again, your insights are always very, very helpful. And that's why we're here. To My pleasure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Beth. Bye. All right. Thanks. Bye.